Hi, welcome back. So we have multiple components already and that's great and that would allow you to create a flexible app with multiple components. But there is something missing or there are actually a lot of things missing but I'll come to them. One thing is right now we're not really taking advantage of the fact that we're doing all that in JavaScript. We're not really able to react to user input. We're not really outputting anything dynamic. Right now there's no real advantage to just creating pure HTML, right? Well, we'll get there step by step. And one important thing is of course passing data from components to components. So let's say from my app component, I want to pass data to my home component because home component is, as all components are, a component I can reuse, I can use in multiple places. I could create two home components after all. And if I save this, we see two new components and each component might have a different configuration. So it would be nice if I, let's say, could pass something like a name or an age or whatever configuration to this home component and display it there. And we can do this with a concept called props for properties. So what are props there for? Well, for the case that we have a component in another component inside of another component and we want to configure this component, then we can pass props into this component. So back in the code, this would work like that. Let's say the home component should get a name and it's totally up to you what you name this. You can define what you want to pass in there. And then you pass data by enclosing it in single curly braces. And then let's say a string in this case, max. And I also want to pass something else. Let's say the age. So in overall, I'm passing some user data here. Now the age would be a number enclosed in curly braces like that. And you could also pass an object here. So let's say I also have my user object here. And in this user object, then you could have something like, again, let's say na name would be Anna and then hobbies could be an array, sports, whatever you like, something like that. And then you could also pass this. So you also pass the user object then, which is user. This one here should be a variable, of course. So that is how you pass props. You just define them like HTML attributes on your component. And then the data you pass has to be enclosed in single curly braces here. And with that, I can go to my home component, which will receive these props. And now how does it receive or how can I use the props in here? It's actually really simple. I can access it in the render method or access it here in the render method by accessing this dot props. So even though I haven't created a property named props in this class, well, remember we're extending react component and react component has this property. So therefore I do have access to my props here. I can lock this to the console and if I go back to my application, you see we locked something here. Let's reload it. Here are some objects. And why is the second one empty? Well, because I'm loading home component twice, right? And only the first time I'm passing data, the second time it's empty. That's why the first time my props property provided by React has my name, my age and the user object. And if we have a look at this object, well, we can of course access all the data here. Well, that means we can not only access, this, uh, access, it here, access it here in the console, we can also output it. So in the new component, we could say your name is, and then this is how you output data in a component. Also with single curly braces, this props name for example. So now we're getting to the place where our components actually make sense. We can output data. We can not only show static content but instead output something like for example properties and we could output data which is not passed by props here too. I could also just output let's say some text which is something like so, I could also output that with 
single curly braces, text. And the second thing you learned, how to pass props and how to use them, like so. Oops, that should not be in the return statement though, should be above it. So with that, I'm outputting the name and your age is, and then output this dot props dot age. And we can also have the user object. So you could say user object name is this props props user dot name. And then we had the hobbies, right? Name and hobbies, right? It's called user, yeah. So this, and then we also have the hobbies, like, or let's create a new line for that, a div, and then we have hobbies, uh, like so, hobbies, and then we wanna output them in an unordered list, let's say. Now here is the question, how could I loop through such an array? And now I know that is quite a lot we're learning at the same time, but it's key to, to understand what's happening here. Looping through items in React is actually really elegant. You can do it directly here, you could do it before too, but you can do it here in your HTML code, if you wanna call it like that, by accessing Oops, go out of the list item for now by accessing this dot props dot user dot hobbies. Then we can use the map function since this is an array. And we can basically just say we have a callback in here, what we want to do for each element in this array. That's what the map function allows me to do. So I'll use the fat arrow syntax since we use ES6 code. If you're not aware what this is, definitely have a look at some ES6 tutorials. Basically, this will give me each individual hobby. The name here is up to me. And I can use this hobby then to output something. And the something should be the list item where I then want to output the individual hobby. Again, enclosed in single curly braces. Even I'm in curly braces here already. That is how you would do that. Now to make this work, I'll go back to the index page, remove the empty home component for now, since that would give me an error otherwise, because I'm trying to output things the other component doesn't have. And then if I go back, you see, well, we got all the wonderful new output dynamically added. We got our hobbies here. We got the something here, which is this text. And we got the name we pass in, the age, and from the user object, the name. So really a lot of stuff and all dynamically input into my render function and into this component here through props from outside of it, but like the text also from inside of it. The key thing to take away is that this is the syntax how to output data in your component, in your HTML code in the component, so to say. Single curly braces and then whatever you want to output can be properties you're getting passed into from outside, but can also be variables or properties of your home class here, like text, which this, this variable defined up here. And that's really key to understand, as of course is this way to loop here. Now regarding the loop, there's an interesting thing. We don't see it here, but first I'm adding another hobby here, let's say reading, and that will work. But if we open up the console, we see that we get this warning, which tells me that I should provide a unique key for each property here. And that is because I'm in a loop here with the list item. And in order to make React.js work better, get a better performance, so to say, I should give each element a key so that React.js is able to uniquely identify it. Otherwise, when checking if it needs to update, it will need to check all the elements as it doesn't have clear references. To assign a key, I simply write key here, like a prop, and then just give it a key. And in order to get one, I'll add a second argument to my a fat arrow function to the arguments I get passed into it automatically by the map method, which I will name i, which is just the 
current iteration number is so starting at zero, then one and so on. And I will pass this as a key. And with that, if I save it, well, you see that's just some hot reloading bugs I got, but the warning went away. And with that, I got clean code again. And with that, you saw how to output data and how to pass props. Two very important key concepts to work with React.js and to build React.js applications, which are more than just displaying HTML pages, but instead are actually outputting data, are dynamic and are able to interact with each other, though until now only from parent to child, but we'll see the other direction soon too. Before we're coming to events and state and how components can interact with each other, let's talk about props a little bit more. There are two other things which are important, which I wanna highlight here. The first one are prop types. Prop types is a concept you'll find in React.js which allows you to validate these props. It's a good practice to set up prop types to tell React what type a certain prop type will have. For the home component, you can set up home or prop types by accessing your home class outside of it here, outside of the class body, and then access prop types like this. That's an object you got built into React.js. This simply is a JavaScript object, and there you list all your props you're expecting as keys. So we have a name prop, then we have a age prop, and we have this user prop. And then you configure them. So the name prop here, for example, is, and then you access React for that, and then you prop types object on the React base class here, or base module. This shall be a string, like that. So with that, I'm just telling React, hey, this property, this name property will be a string. And in order to learn more about available prop types, simply visit the official React.js page and then you may just Google for prop types to find out more about available prop types here. The age here, for example, will be of type number. And the user here will be an object. So this will be of type object. And again, it's just a good practice to do this. And oops, that should all be capital case, by the way, capital case P here at the beginning for prop types. So with that, if you save that, you see it still works, but it is a good practice to let React.js know about these prop types and well, use them. Prop types enforce that your components get used correctly and you get errors if you try to set a prop to a type it's not meant to be. We do this because JavaScript doesn't have types built in, right? It's not TypeScript, it has dynamic types. We can reassign a string to be a number. Therefore, prop types allow us to make sure that we only use the types we wanna use. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you is that you can also pass data into a component from another component without using props. Because consider this example here. You have your home component, that's all nice. But besides these props you pass here, you might have, let's say, some text you want to pass. And that would be a common thing if you think about a widget like, let's say, a, a tabs component where you have multiple tabs. Then you might want to pass a specific text or HTML code into this component from outside and not through a prop. So you want to write something like this, opening and closing tag. And in between, you want to have, let's say a paragraph. This is a paragraph like that. Now it would be nice to render this paragraph in my home component. And in order to do this, React.js has a special property you can access. It's called on this props, of course, and then children. Now, children is a reserved word, which just means whatever is passed between the opening and closing tag here. So if I save this and go back, we see this is a paragraph. And if we inspect this, we'd see it really is a paragraph. So the HTML code was also passed successfully, not just the text, also the P tags. And that is how you can use or pass 
complete code, including components, by the way, from outside into a component. Yes, using props indirectly, but not setting it up as props here in this attribute like style. Of course, it's a good practice to also set up the children props here. So children, and now since you can't define the type of that, what is a good idea is to access prop types and then element is required, for example. No, is not that, is required. Like this, if I save this and go back, it should work and no errors in the console. So with that, we're using the children props. Again, a reserved word. We set it up correctly here, just make it required and we're passing it from outside. Of course, that means whenever we recreate this home component, we will have to pass something since children is required in our case here. So with that, we're done having a look at props. We learned a lot about props and not only props, also how to generally output data in React. That really was a key part of the series. And with that, we can continue to events and then also state.